Let's talk about the parallel axis theorem for moment of inertia. As a reminder, the moment of inertia is the rotational equivalent of inertial mass in the rotational equivalent of Newton's second law. The angular acceleration is directly proportional to the net torque acting on the object and inversely proportional to its moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of a point mass is equal to the product of the mass times its distance from the rotational axis squared. For extended objects, the formula for moment of inertia will also be a combination of the mass times the dimension of the object squared multiplied by a coefficient that depends on the exact shape or mass distribution of the object. The orientation of the rotational axis relative to the object may also make a difference. If we displace the rotational axis from the center of mass of the object, then the torque needed to produce angular acceleration must account for both the object revolving around the axis and its own rotation at the same time. The result of which is the treatment of moment of inertia through the parallel axis theorem. This theorem states that for a rigid body rotation, the total moment of inertia of an object is the sum of its moment of inertia as if it were a point mass plus its moment of inertia through its center of mass with an axis parallel to the new rotational axis. As a demonstration of how to use the parallel axis theorem, let's take the case of a long thin rod rotating about its center. Refer back to a previous video on how this moment of inertia is derived, but the result is 1 twelfth mass times length squared. Now let's use the parallel axis theorem to calculate its moment of inertia if it was rotating about its very end.
Remember, you must sum up the moment of inertia of both the center of mass and treating the object as a point mass. In this case, the axis of rotation was displaced by half the length of the rod. Here is our new moment of inertia. You can go back and verify this new moment of inertia through explicit integration. The parallel axis theorem will work no matter the direction of the displacement of the rotational axis as long as it is equivalently parallel. You can use this example as a verification of this concept.